Good morning. Um, welcome to the Grennan Center for the Arts in Tom's River, New Jersey. How many of you have been to Tom's River before? My name's Heidi Sheridan, and as the Executive and Artistic Director, I'd like to welcome you to Ocean County College. We are so pleased to host this year's Region 2 and 3 competition in coordination with Apple Farm Arts and Music Center. As a poet myself, I am honored to join you in honoring the art of recitation and its history in poetry. I'm so proud of all of our champions, and I cannot wait to hear your work. In the spirit of today's event, I would like to welcome our opening poet to the stage. As the poet in residence of the Hoboken Historical Museum and longtime publisher and editor of Longshot's Arts and Literary Magazine, Danny Schott is no stranger to Poetry Out Loud. Having coached four New York City Poetry Out Loud champions in his teaching career, today's event is a return to form for this publisher and editor. Please give a warm welcome to Danny Schott. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. I just want to say how in awe I am of all the student um, poets. They keep poetry alive, and they're so awesome. I was backstage with them. Just the energy um, of them is pretty amazing. Anyway, let me begin. And I apologize. I'm a poet who's written many, many poems, and I haven't memorized them all. So. How to write the great Jersey poem. Start in the Meadowlands, or the Turnpike, or on the Turnpike driving through the Meadowlands. In a car, a fast car with a broken muffler and faulty air conditioner. Wind up down the shore after sundown, listening to a bar band, drinking beer in a plastic cup. Have a secret rendezvous with a beautiful girl or boy, your choice. Born to Run plays in the background, or Sandy, or My Way, anything but New York, New York. Working class roots must be explored in depth. Factory work, waitressing while attending state college, convenience store clerkery, and drunken poetry readings in extraterrestrial bars, topics worthy of consideration. Wax poetic over holiday celebrations, 4th of July fireworks, suburban Christmas light displays, Thanksgiving homecoming games, blaring salsa street festivals, memorial parades with hobbled veterans and fire trucks, inebriated St. Patrick's bar crawls, feasts for saints, brass bands, snaking through streets with statues carried on ancient Italian shoulders. Go sparingly on the adjectives and adverbs. The grammar of New Jersey is built on nouns and verbs, description unbecoming. Scatter the ashes of a loved one in the Hudson, the Delaware, the Atlantic Ocean, according to temperament. Occasionally write about family, the family you grew up with or the family you raised. A daughter talking to a god be held in empty hands, a malingering son slapped on the cheek, the tears that follow. Your dad, the Jersey City cop who dragged you off the shadowy streets and thereby saved your life journey through ravenous tunnels with the promise of strange music, glamour, adventure in the night. Rail against but accept corruption for what it is. Employment opportunity for the village idiots of your town and county. Keep open relationships with our friends from the south, Jersey that is, and exotic people whose antic descriptions of devils, piney woods, crosses burning in moonlit fields, Atlantic City hijinks provide fodder for many a homey tale. Mourn the suicides and overdoses of friends and lovers who venture to the city with oversized dreams. Record your melancholy as the casket rests in the ripped green grass. Admire the gleaming Gotham skyline from a distance. Remember, it was erected for us. Let the unknown unfold organically. No matter what Camus says, New Jersey is the birthplace of existentialism. Who can argue with a pair of long-haired boys smoking Winston's in front of a 7-Eleven on a Saturday night? One more. And this is for our student poets. Tempest. All the poets who ever writ are here with me. 
I raise the mainsail up the mast for those who passed into the night alive within us. The closeted friend too ashamed to seek treatment until late, until too late. A black-hatted New Yorican legend lugging a condom crucifix, singing songs of Puerto Rican liberation. The blind professor holding court upon a smoky couch, welcoming all who sail through open doors to introduce themselves. I stand before you, bent but unbowed, gray but not dead, anonymous and proud. Some poets have tied their sails and souls to the warm comforts of the academy. Rare few have cast off against the prevailing gales, emerging as a prophet for their motley crew of misfits. Others become unmoored by the cruel vicissitudes of fashion, unable or unwilling to follow the wind. A few have fallen into doldrums, pounding out despaired manifestos to the sound of Mahler on broke down radios in half lit rooms. Hyacinths for the disappeared, thrown into the roiling sea, so called enemies of state, victims of the dictator's purge, and those destroyed by madness and lack of recognition. Yet here I stand, creased by absurd laughter, unembittered by rejection, breathless in love with the elusive beauty of words spoken into the void. To all the poets who ever lived, proclaiming God's glory in the Judean desert, telling tales of epic wanderings off Ionian shores, griots singing praise songs, calling on ancestors' protection, besotted flaneurs, absinthe blind, scribbling in tattered notebooks, the feminist icon brooding at our kitchen table over her terminal diagnosis, a candy store owner holding intricate jazz lines in his head while serving soda pop to thirsty teens, the working class Brooklyn Jew who found his distinctive voice later in life and couldn't stop sharing, a singular woman writing shapeless verse to no one and everyone simultaneously. I call you forth here upon this rugged deck, envel enveloped in the foggy soup between wreckage and time, memory and consciousness, sail with us upon the choppy waves. Thank you. Good luck to all the student poet contestants. They are already champions. Let's have a warm round of applause. Hello and welcome to Poetry Out Loud Region 2 and 3 Contest. My name is Eric Stratton. I'm the Education and Community Engagement Coordinator here at the Grunin Center. Now every single year, hundreds of thousands of students nationwide learn about the impact and power of poetry through Poetry Out Loud, a free arts program from the National Endowment of the Arts and the Poetry Foundation. Since the program began in 2005, more than 4.1 million students and 68,000 teachers from 17,000 schools and organizations in 55 states and territories have all participated in Poetry Out Loud. And today, we're here to celebrate and cheer on the finalists from 15 schools in regions two and three. New Jersey Poetry Out Loud is a project of the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and the Count Basie Center for the Arts. Here at the Jay and Linda Grennan Center for the Arts, we are grateful to be part of a growing network of regional partners from across the state, including Rutgers Camden Center for the Arts, Apple Farm Arts and Music Center, Mayo Performing Arts Center, South Orange Performing Arts Center, and Ramapo College of New Jersey. We also want to offer special thanks to Kevin Carey Press, who provides the finalists and their teachers with books of poetry. So, just as an overview for today, we're going to be starting by meeting each of the 15 Region 2 and 3 finalists by calling them onto the stage. Then we'll begin with Round 1, where each student will recite their poems. There will be a short pause in between each student as our jurors, who you will meet shortly, compete, complete their scoring. Once we finish Round 1, we'll continue right into Round 2, and there will be no break, so stay in your seats. But at the end of Round 2, we're going to take a short intermission, and then the top 10 scoring finalists will recite in Round 3. And then at the, at the close of round three, if time permits, all of the 15 students will join me on stage to have a talk back to share their personal experiences with Poetry Out Loud and answer questions. Once the jurors have completed their work, we will then honor our regional finalists and announce the two regional champions. These two regional champions selected will go on to compete at the New Jersey Poetry Out Loud State Finals at the Count Basie Center for the Arts on March 6th. Our state champion will then receive an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C. for the national finals in May. 
the state champion teacher will be awarded free tuition and lodging to attend the Frost Place annual poetry conference for teachers this summer. Many thanks to Cabin Carey Press, not only for this generous contribution, but also for providing those free poetry books to all the schools participating at the regional level. Now, before we bring out our regional finalists, I'd like to introduce the team today that will be scoring our participants. First, our content judges, who will be, crit who will be critiquing our finalist recitation. Bringing in a strong commitment to the arts and a rich background in community development as the Director of Marketing and Digital Strategies for American Repertory Ballet, our first juror is Pascalina de Bauer. A word weaver and poet hailing from the Philippines with the ocean on her skin and mountains on her back, we have Micah uh, de la Cueva. And our third juror, an award-winning published poet and OCC educator, as well as the Executive and Artistic Director here at the Grunin Center, Heidi Sheridan. Next, we have our accuracy judge, who will be noting our finalist accuracy to the text. We have our theater and dance instructor and the dean of faculty development here and at uh, Ocean County College, Catherine Mancuso. And of course, as our last person, our prompter, who will be helping students if they forget a line, we have Jacqueline Wood, our assistant director of education and community engagement here at the Grennan Center. And now, I'd like to uh, introduce our regional champion, our regional finalists. We have from J.P. Stevens High School, Edith Zhao. From OCVTS Academy of Law and Public Safety, Emily Wilczek. From Henry Hudson Regional School, Lydia Smith. <laughs> from Vineland Senior High School South, Jillian Schultz. From South River High School, Nathan Scanlon. From Ocean Township High School, Julia Saltera. From Homedale High School, uh, Gabriela Pastigo. <laughs> From Colts Neck High School, Catherine Mern. From Spotswood High School, Mia uh, Mazarek. From Trinity Hall Preparatory High School, Leah Marchetti. From Howell High School, Emma Housen. From Red Bank Regional High School, Jake Fredericks. From Barnegat High School, Winter Delaney. From Piscataway High School, Spencer Copeland. And from the Charlotte Mason Academy, uh, Shanley Avery. You can just go like this one. I want you all to please give our champions one last round of applause. And thank you all to our contestants. We're going to have you all head backstage, and we'll see you all soon for round one. So just write this way, folks. We'd also like to recognize the staff behind the scenes that help make Poetry Out Loud possible. Samantha Giussiani, the Senior Director of Education and Outreach, and Kenya Bullock, the NJPOL State Coordinator and School Programs and Partnership Manager, both from the Count Basie Center for the Arts, as well as Samantha Clark, the Program Officer for Arts Education and Lifelong Learning at the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. And of course, our guest of honor, President of the Grunin Foundation and member of the New Jersey State Council on the Arts, Jeremy Grunin, who will be helping present our awards at the end of the program. Now, with all that said, we'll begin our competition with the first round. Hi, my name is Edith Zhao, and I will be performing There Are Birds Here by Jamal May. For Detroit. There are birds here. So many birds here is what I was trying to say. When they said those birds were metaphors for what is trapped between buildings and buildings. No. 
The birds are here to root around for bread. The girl's hands tear and toss like confetti. No, I don't mean the bread is torn like cotton. I said confetti, and no, not the confetti a tank can make of a building. I mean the confetti a boy can't stop smiling about. And no, his smile isn't much like a skeleton at all. And no, his neighborhood is not like a war zone. I am trying to say his neighborhood is as tattered and feathered as anything else, as shadow pierced by sun and light parted by shadow dances anything else. But they won't stop saying how lovely the ruins, how ruined the lovely children must be in that birdless city. Thank you. Epitaph by Catherine Phillips. What on earth deserves our trust? Youth and beauty both are dust. Long we gathering are with pain. What one moment calls again. Seven years childless marriage passed. A son, a son is born at last. So exactly limbed and fair, full of good spirits, mean and air, as a long life promised. Yet, in less than six weeks, dead. Too promising, too great a mind in so small room to be confined. Therefore, in heaven fit to dwell, he quickly broke the prison shell. So the subtle alchemist can't with Hermes' seal resist. Power, the powerful spirits subtler flight but twill bid him long good night. The sun, however, it, if it arise, half as glorious as his eyes. Like this infant takes a shroud buried in a morning cloud. Anthem for my belly after eating too much by Kara Jackson. I look in the mirror and all the chips I've eaten this month have accumulated like schoolwork at the bottom of my tummy. My belly, a country I'm trying to love. My mouth is a lover devoted to you. My belly, my belly. The birds will string a song together with wind for you and your army of solids, militia of Greece. Americans love excess, but we also love jeans and refuse to make excess comfortable in them. I step into a fashionable prison, my middle managed and fastened into suffering, my gracious gut dutiful dome. I will wear a house for you that you can live in, promise walls that embrace your growing flesh and watch you reach toward everything possible. Thank you.
Thoughtless Cruelty by Charles Lamb. There, Robert, you have killed that fly. And should you thousand ages try the life you've taken to supply, you could not do it. You surely must have been devoid of thought and sense to have destroyed a thing which you'd no way annoy. You'll one day rue it. Twas but a fly, perhaps you'll say, that's born in April, dies in May, that does but just learn to display his wings one minute and in the next is vanished quite. A bird devours it in his flight, or comes a cold blast in the night, there's no breath in it. The bird but seeks his proper food, and providence, whose power endued that fly with life when it thinks good may justly take it. But you have no excuses for it, a life by nature made so short. Lest your reason is that you, for sport, should shorter make it. A fly. A little thing you rate. But Robert, do not estimate a creature's pain by small or great. The greatest beings can have but fibers, nerves, and flesh, and these, the smallest ones possess, although their frames and structures less escape our seeing. Hello, my name is Nathan Scanlon, and today I will be reciting The Vacuum by Howard Nemroth. <clears throat> the house is so quiet now. The vacuum cleaner sulks in the corner closet, its bag limp as a stopped lung, its mouth grinning into the floor. Maybe at my slovenly life, my dog dead youth. I've lived this way long enough. But when my old woman died, her soul went in to that vacuum cleaner, and I can't bear to see the bag swell like a belly, eating the dust and the worn mice, and begin to howl because there is old filth everywhere. She used to crawl in the corner and under the stair. <laughs> I know now how life is cheap as dirt and still the hungry, angry heart hangs on and howls, biting at air. Thank you. Figure by Robert Wrigley. You want a piece of me to see. From the flesh of me, a flesh from within me, no one's ever seen. Not me, nor the mother or the lovers of me. A piece that will have been me, but then no longer me. Instead, a synecdoche of me. Or possibly metonymy, a figure of speech of me in contiguity or association with me, a part for the whole of me, a sliver that once was me. So that you might perceive the end of me. Un 
Tintero, Inkwell, by Desiree Alvarez. Anger is the other person inside mi garganta, my throat. The mouth's mouth is the deepest. Rage is the homeless boy fallen down a well. Shout down and he will echo back. La lengua, tongue. How long have you been down there? Subterraneo? Underground? The letters of Cortez are difficult to read. On each page, a horse dies. The lord of the city lives homeless in a canoe. Hundreds of natives are speared. Another town is burned alive with all its cage creatures. On each page, the people appear to walk over their dead. La tierra estercolada. The earth fertilized spreads a cloth whose pattern repeats. On each page, the future arrives on a raft woven of snakes. Over and over, the design obliterates. Never does he say this was their home we took. Seen Through a Window by David Ferry. A man and a woman are sitting at a table. It is supper time. The air is green. The walls are white in the green air as rocks underwater retain their own true color. Though washed in green, I do not know either the man or the woman, nor do I know whatever they know of each other. Though washed in my eye, they keep their own true color. The man is all his own hunched strength, the body's self in strength that bears like weariness, itself upon itself as a stone's weight bears heavily on itself to be itself. Heavy the strength that bears the body down and the way he feeds is like a dreamless sleep. The dreaming of a stone is how he feeds. The woman's arms are plump, mottled a little, the flesh like standing milk and on one arm, a blue bruise got in some household labor or other, flowering in the white. Her staring eye, like some bird's cry called from some deepest wood, says nothing of what it is, but what it is. Such silence is the bird's cry of the stone. A Birthday by Christina Rossetti. My heart is like a singing bird whose nest is in a watered shoot. My heart is like an apple tree whose boughs are bent with thick set fruit. My heart is like a rainbow shell that paddles in a halcyon sea. My heart is gladder than all these because my love has come to me. Raise me a dais of silk and down, hang it with ver and purple dyes, carve it in doves and pomegranates and peacocks with a hundred eyes. Work it in gold and silver grapes, in leaves and silver fleur-de-lis, because the birthday of my life has come. 
my love has come to me. Thank you. Adam's Curse by William Butler Yeats. We sat together at one summer's end, that beautiful, mild woman, your close friend, and you and I, and talked of poetry. I said, a line will take us hours, maybe, yet if it does not seem a moment's thought, our stitching and unstitching has been not. Better go down upon your marrow bones and scrub a kitchen pavement or break stones like an old pauper in all kinds of weather. For to articulate sweet sounds together is to work harder than all these. And yet be thought an idler by the noisy set of bankers, schoolmasters, and clergymen the martyrs call the world. And thereupon that beautiful, mild woman, for whose sake there's many a one shall find out all heartache upon finding that her voice is sweet and low, replied. To be born woman is to know, although they do not talk of it at school, that we must labor to be beautiful. I said, it's certain there is no fine thing since Adam's fall but needs much laboring. There have been lovers who thought love should be so much compounded of high courtesy that they would sigh and quote with learned looks precedence out of beautiful old books. Yet now it seems an idle trade enough. We sat grown quiet at the name of love. We saw the last embers of daylight die, and in the trembling blue-green of the sky, a moon, worn as it has been a shell, washed by time's waters as they rose and fell about the stars and broke in days and years. I had a thought for no one but your ears, that you were beautiful and that I strove to love you in the old highway of love. That it had all seemed happy, and yet we'd grown as weary-hearted as that hollow moon. This is John Lennon by Mary Jo Salter. The music was already turning sad. Those fresh-faced voices singing in a round the lie that time could turn its needle back and play from the beginning. Had you lived to 80, as you'd wished, who knows? You might have broken from the circle of that past more hours than yours never even sure which was the truest color for your hair. It changed with each photographer. We claimed you for ourselves, called you John, and named the day you left us. Spun out like a reel, the last broadcast to prove you'd lived it all, and end to hope itself. It isn't true, and worse does you no justice if we call your death the death of anything but you. It put you in the headlines once again. Years after you'd left the band, you joined another of those whose lives in breaking link all memory with their end. The studio of history can tamper with you now, as if there'd always been a single track chance traveled on, and your discordant voice had led us to the final violence. Yet, like the times when I, a star-crossed fan, had cataloged your favorite foods, your views on monarchy and war, and gaily clipped your quips and daily antics from the news, I keep a loving record of your death. All the evidence is in, of what, and to what end it's hard to figure out, riddles you might have beat into a song. A younger face of yours, a cover shot, peered from all the newsstands. 
as if proof of some noteworthy thing you'd newly done. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jake Fredericks, and this is Sorrow Is Not My Name by Ross Gay. No matter the pull toward brink, no matter the florid, deep sleep awaits, there is a time for everything. Look, just this morning a vulture nodded his red grizzled head at me and I looked at him, admiring the sickle of his beak. Then the wind kicked up, and after arranging that good suit of feathers, he up and took off, just like that. And to boot, there are on this planet alone something like two million naturally occurring sweet things, some with names so generous as to kick the steel from my knees, agave, persimmon, stickball, the purple okra I bought for two bucks at the market. Think of that, the long night, the skeleton in the mirror, the man behind me on the bus taking notes, yeah, yeah, but look. My niece is running through a field calling my name. My neighbor sings like an angel and at the end of my block is a basketball court. I remember, my color's green. I'm spring. Hi, my name is Winter Delaney, and I'll be reading the poem Winter by Mary Ponzot. I don't know what to say to you, neighbor, as you shovel snow from your part of our street, neat in your Greek black. I've waited for chance to find words. Now, by chance, we meet. We took our boys to the same kindergarten 13 years ago when our husbands went. Both boys hated school, dropped out feral, dropped in to separate troubles. You shift snow fast, back bent, but your boy killed himself, six days dead. My boy washed your wall when the police were done. He says, we weren't friends, and shakes his head. I told him it was great he had that gun, and shakes. I shake close to you, close to you. You have a path to clear, and so you do. I'm Spencer Copeland, and this is I'm Offering This Poem by Jimmy Santiago Baca. I'm offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you, or like a pair of thick socks the cold cannot bite through. I love you. I have nothing else to give you. So it is a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It is a scarf for your head to wear over your hair, to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost, needing direction in the wilderness life becomes when mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or hogan in dense trees, come knocking, and I will answer. Give you directions 
and to let you warm yourself by this fire. Rest by this fire and make you feel safe. I love you. It's all I have to give and all anyone needs to live and to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. Hi, I'm Shanley Avery, and I will be reciting The Lake I Live In Is Free by William Butler Yeats. I will arise and go now, and go to Innisfree, in a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, and a hive for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee loud glades. For I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. And there midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now. For always night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sound by the shore. As I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Vagrants and Loiters by Kwame Dawes. South Carolina, approximately 1950. You got that clean waistcoat, the bright white of a well-tailored shirt. You got those loose as sacks, slacks, and some spit-polished shoes. And you know whether you're looking like money or about to take a stroll to tilt that hat like you own the world. Yeah. Smoke your pipe, roll your tobacco, and hold loose as authority. Your muscles lithe and hard. And every so often, when you feel the urge, you reach into the waist pocket and pull out that watch on its chain. Then look in the sky and say, gonna be a cold one when it come. <laughs> like God gave you that fancy clock to tell the future. These are the easy boys of the goodly South <laughs> waiting for what is out of frame to happen, the sheriff with his questions, the paddy wagon, the chain gang, the weight of the world. Waiting with such delicate dignity 
fickle as the seasonal sky. Thank you. Dragons by Devin Johnston. We gathered in a field southwest of town, several hundred hauling coolers and folding chairs along a gravel road, dry in August. Two ruts of soft dust that soaked into our clothes and rose in plumes behind us. By noon, we could discern their massive coils emerging from a bale of cloud, scales scattering crescent dapples through walnut fronds. The light polarized, each leaf tip in focus. As their bodies blotted out the sun, the forest faded to silver point. A current of cool air extended from the bottomlands, an intimation of October. And the bowl of the sky deepened its celestial archaeology. Their tails, like the banners of a vast army, swept past Orion and his retinue to sighs and scattered applause. The faint wail of a child crying. In half an hour, they had passed on in search of deep waters. Before our company dispersed, dust whirling in the wind, we planned to meet again in seven years for the next known migration. Sunlight flashed on windshields. And caught by the riverbank, cloudy, keeled scale, about the size of a dinner plate, cool as blank to shine in the heat of the afternoon. April Midnight by Arthur Simmons. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together through the tumultuous night of London in the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gaslight, days work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool, the wind blows fresh in our faces, cleansing entrancing after the heat and the fumes and the footlights where you dance and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here together, good to be roaming even in London, even at midnight, lover-like in a lover's gloaming. You the dancer and I the dreamer, children together wandering lost in the night of London in the miraculous April weather. Thank you. <laughs> to the Angel Beast by Eduardo C. Corral for Arthur Russell. All that glitters isn't music. Once, hidden in tall grass, I tossed fistfuls of dirt into the air, dough after dough of leaping. You said it was nothing but a trick of the light. Gold curves, gold scarves. Am I not your animal? You'd wait in the orchard for hours to watch a deer break from the shadows. You said it was like lifting a cello out of its black case.
Hello, it's me again. <clears throat> Today, I'll be reciting, and if I did, what then, by George Gascon. <clears throat> and if I did, what then? Are you aggrieved therefore? The sea hath fish for every man, and what would you have, more? Thus did my mistress once, amaze my mind with doubt, and popped question for the knots to beat my brains about. Whereto I thus replied, each fisherman can wish that all the seas at every tide were his alone to fish. And so did I, in vain, but since it may not be, let such fish dare as finally gain and leave the loss for me. But with such luck and loss, I will contend myself till tides of turning time may toss such fishers on the shelf. And when they stick on sands that every man may see, then will I laugh and clap my hands as they do now at me. Thank you. I Heard a Fly Buzz When I Died by Emily Dickinson. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. And breaths were gathering firm for that last onset when the king be witnessed in the room. I willed my keepsake signed away what portion of me be assignable. And then it was there interposed a fly between the light and me. And then the windows failed. And then I could not see to see. Songs for the People by Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. Let me make the songs for the people, songs for the old and young, songs to stir like a battle cry wherever they are sung. Not for the clashing of sabers, for carnage nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. Let me make the songs for the weary, amid life's fever and fret, till hearts shall relax their tension and careworn brows forget. Let me sing for little children before their footsteps stray, sweet anthems of love and duty to float o'er life's highway. I would sing for the poor and aged when shadows dim their sight, of the bright and restful mansions where there shall be no night. Our world so worn and weary needs music pure and strong to hush the jangle and discords of sorrow pain and wrong music to soothe all its sorrow till war and crime shall cease and the hearts of men grown tender girdle the world with peace
Thoughtless Cruelty by Charles Lamb. There, Robert, you have killed that fly. And should you thousand ages try the life you've taken to supply, you could not do it. You surely must have been devoid of thought and sense to have destroyed a thing which no way you annoyed. You'll one day rue it. Twas but a fly, perhaps you'll say, that's born in April, dies in May, that does but just learn to display his wings one minute and in the next is vanished quite. A bird devours it in its flight, or come a cold blast in the night. There's no breath in it. The bird but seeks his proper food, and providence whose power endued that fly with life when it thinks good may justly take it. But you? Have no excuses for it. A life by nature made so short, less reason is that you, for sport, should shorter make it. A fly, a little thing you rate, but Robert, do not estimate a creature's pain by small or great. The greatest being can have but fibers, nerves, and flesh, and these the smallest ones possess. Although their frame and structure less escape our seeing. Famous by Naomi Shihab Nye. The river is famous to the fish. The loud voice is famous to silence, which knew it would inherit the earth before anybody said so. The cat sleeping on the fence is famous to the birds watching him from the birdhouse. The tear is famous, briefly, to the cheek. The idea you carry close to your bosom is famous to your bosom. The boot is famous to the earth, more famous than the dress shoe, which is famous only to floors. The bent photograph is famous to the one who carries it, and not at all famous to the one who is pictured. I want to be famous to shuffling men who smile while crossing streets, sticky children in grocery lines, famous as the one who smiled back. I want to be famous in the way a pulley is famous, or a buttonhole. Not because it did anything spectacular, but because it never forgot what it could do. Thank you. The Days Gone By by James Whitcomb Riley. <laughs> oh, the days gone by. Oh, the days gone by. The apples in the orchard and the pathway through the rye, the chirrup of the robin and the whistle of the quail as he piped across the meadow sweet as any nightingale. When the bloom was on the clover and the blue was in the sky and my happy heart brimmed over in the days gone by. In the days gone by where my naked feet were tripped by the honeysuckle's tangles where the water lilies dipped and the ripples of the river lipped the moss along the brink where the placid-eyed and lazy-footed cattle came to drink and the tilting snipe stood fearless of the truant's wayward cry and the splashing of the swimmer in the days gone by. Oh, the days gone by. 
oh, the days gone by. The music of the laughing lip, the luster of the eye, the childish faith in fairies and Aladdin's magic ring. The simple, soul-reposing, glad belief in everything. <laughs> when life was like a story, holding neither sob nor sigh, in the golden, olden glory of the days gone by. <laughs> Thank you. This is George Moses Horton, Myself, by George Moses Horton. I feel myself in need of the inspiring strains of ancient lore, my heart to lift, my empty mind to feed, and all the world explore. I know that I am old and never can recover what is past, but for the future may some light unfold and soar from age's blast. I feel resolved to try my wish to prove, my calling to pursue, or mount up from the earth into the sky to show what heaven can do. My genius from a boy has fluttered like a bird within my heart, but could not thus confined her powers employ, impatient to depart. She, like a restless bird, would spread her wing, her power to be unfurled, let her songs be loudly heard and dart from world to world. Thank you. This is We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile, but let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. My name is Winter Delaney, and I'll be reading the poem Ozymandias by Percy Bichelli. I once met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them and the heart that fed and on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away.
Siren Song by Margaret Atwood. This is the one song everyone would like to learn, the song that is irresistible, the song that forces men to leap over board and squadrons even though they see the beached skulls, the song nobody knows because anyone who has heard it is dead and the others can't remember. Shall I tell you the secret? And if I do, will you get me out of this bird suit? I don't enjoy it here, squatting on this island, looking picturesque and mythical with these two feathery maniacs. I don't enjoy singing this trio, fatal and valuable. I shall tell the secret to you, to you, only to you. Come closer. This song is a cry for help. Help me, only you, only you can. You are unique at last. <sighs> Alas, it is a boring song, but it works every time. The Destruction of Sennacherib by Lord Byron. The Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold, but the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea as the blue wave rolls nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green, that host on their banners at sunset were seen. Like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown, that host on their morrow lay withered and strown. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. In the eyes of the sleeper, wax deadly and chill in their hearts, but once heathed will forever grow still. And there lay the steed with his nostril all wide and through him rolled not the breath of his pride. And the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and as cold as the spray of the rock beaten surf. And there lay the rider, distorted and pale, with the dew on his brow and the rust on his mail. And the tents were all silent, the banners alone, the lances unlifted, the trumpet unblown. And the widows of Asher are loud in their wail, and the idols are broke in the temple of Baal. And the might of the Gentile, unsmoked by the sword, hath melted like snow in the glance of the Lord. Hello again, everyone. Just letting you know, we're now going to be taking a brief intermission, about 10 minutes, so we can get up, stretch your legs, and then come back for round three. Thank you very much. Before we begin round three of our competition, I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that only the students with the top 10 combined scores from round one and two will participate. And it was a very, very close set of scores. Everyone is between like 10 points of each other. So it was a very, very difficult decision for our judges. And I really wanna thank all the students and schools for attending today. So our 10 students that will be performing in round three from J.P. Stevens High School, Edith Zhao, from Henry Hudson Regional School, Lydia Smith, from, from Ocean Township High School, Julia Saltara. 
From Homedale High School, Gabriella Postigo. From Colts Neck High School, Katherine Mern. From Spotswood High School, Mia Mazarek. From Trinity Preparatory High School, Leah Marchetti. From, from Red Bank Regional High School, Jake Fredericks. From Barnegat High School, Winter Delaney. And then we'll be ending round three with Spencer Copeland from Piscataway High School. All right, and with that said, we're now gonna begin round three. No, I wasn't meant to love and be loved by Mirza Asadullah Khan Ghalib, translated by Vijay Sishadri. No, I wasn't meant to love and be loved. If I'd lived longer, I would have waited longer. Knowing you are faithless keeps me alive and hungry. Knowing you faithful would kill me with joy. Delicate, are you and your vows are delicate too. So easily do they break. You are a laconic marksman. You leave me not dead, but perpetually dying. I want my friends to heal me, sucker me. Instead, I get analysis. Conflagrations that would make stones drip blood campfires compared to my anguish. Two-headed, inescapable anguish loves anguish. Or the anguish of time. Another dark sever incommunicable night. Death would be fine if I only died once. <laughs> I would have liked a solitary death not this lavish funeral, this grave anyone can visit. You are mystical, Galib. And also, you speak beautifully. Are you a saint or just drunk as usual? Thank you. Stomp by Nikki Grimes. I come home, feet about to bleed from angry stomping. Boy, says mom, quit making all that racket. But what does she expect? When day after day, haters sling words at me like jagged stones designed to split my skin. I retreat to my room, collapse on the bed, count one, two, Three. When I get to ten, 
I snatch up journal and pen, flip to a clean page and unload my hurt, my rage, till I can breathe again. Letter by letter, I rediscover my power to decide which words matter, which words don't, and whose. Calm now, I remember. I get to choose. Thank you. When You Are Old by William Yeats. When you are old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love, false or true. But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, Murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. I am offering this poem by Jimmy Santiago Baca. I am offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you, or like a pair of thick socks the cold cannot bite through. I love you. I have nothing else to give you, so it is a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It is a scarf for your head to wear over your hair, to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost. Needing direction in the wilderness, life becomes more mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or hogan in dense trees. Come knocking, and I will answer, give you directions, and let you warm yourself by this fire. Rest by this fire, and make you feel safe. I love you. It's all I have to give, and all anyone needs to live and to go on living inside. When the world outside no longer cares if you live or die, remember, I love you. Under the Lemon Tree by Marcia De La O. Not rain, but fine mist falls from my lemon tree. 
a balm of droplets and green shadow. Six years now, my mother gone to earth. This dew, light as footsteps of the dead. She often walked out here, craned her neck, considered the fruit. Hundreds of globes in their leathery hides, figuring on custard and pudding, meringue and hollandaise. But our plans didn't work out. The tree goes on unceasingly. Lemons fall and fold into earth and begin again. Me? I come here as a salve against heat, come to languish, to let the soft bursts, essence of citrus summers distillate, drift into my face and settle. Water and gold brew in the quiet deeps at the far end of a season. Leaves swallow the body of light, and the breath of water brims over. My hands cup each other the way hers did. <laughs> Dust by Dorian Lau. Someone spoke to me last night, told me the truth. Just a few words, but I recognized it. I knew I should make myself get up, write it down, but it was late and I was exhausted from working all day in the garden, moving rocks. Now I remember only the flavor. Not like food, sweet or sharp. More like a fine powder, like dust. And I wasn't elated or frightened, but simply wrapped, aware. That's how it is sometimes. God comes to your window, all bright light and black wings, and you're just too tired to open it. Thank you. They Are Hostile Nations by Margaret Atwood. In view of the fading animals, the proliferation of sewers and fears, the sea clogging, the air nearing extinction, we should be kind. We should take warning. We should forgive each other. Instead, we are opposite. We touch as though attacking. The gifts we bring, even in good faith, maybe, warp in our hands to implements, to maneuvers. Put down the target of me, you guard, inside your binoculars. In turn, I will surrender this aerial photograph, your vulnerable sections marked in red. I have found so useful. See, we are alone in this dormant field the snow that cannot be eaten or captured. Here, there is no army here. There is no money. It is cold and getting colder. We need each other's breathing. Warmth surviving is the only war we can afford. Stay walking with me. There is almost time if we can only make it as far as the possibly last summer. Thank you. This is Burning in the Rain by Richard Blanco. Someday, compassion would demand I set myself free of my desire to recreate my father, indulge in my mother's losses, strangle lovers with words, forcing them to confess for me and take the blame. Today was that day, 
I tossed them sheet by sheet on the patio and gathered them into a pyre. I wanted to let them go in a blaze, tiny white dwarfs imploding beside the azaleas and ficus bushes. Let them crackle, burst like winged seeds. Let them smolder into gossamer embers, a thousand gray butterflies in the wind. Today was that day, but it rained kept raining instead of fire, water, drops knocking on doors, wetting windows into mirrors reflecting me in the oaks, the garden walls and stones swelling into ghostlier shades of themselves, a, the, the wind chimes giggling in the storm, a coffee cup left overflowing with rain. Instead of burning, my pages turned into water lilies floating over puddles. Then tiny white cliffs as the sun set, finally drying all night under the moon into paper mache souvenirs. Today, the rain would not let their lives burn. I will be reading Adam's Curse by William Butler Yeats. We sat together at one summer's end, that beautiful, mild woman, your close friend, and you and I, and talked of poetry. I said, a line will take us hours, maybe, yet if it does not seem a moment's thought, our stitching and unstitching has been not. Better go down upon your marrow bones and scrub a kitchen pavement or break stones. Like an old pauper in all kinds of weather, for to articulate sweet sounds together is to work harder than all of these, and yet be thought an idler by the noisy set of bankers, schoolmasters, and clergymen the martyrs call the world. And thereupon that beautiful, mild woman, for whose sake there's many a one shall find out all heartache on finding that her voice is sweet and low, replied, to be born woman is to know although they do not talk of it at school, that we must labor to be beautiful. I said, it's certain there is no fine thing since Adam's fall but needs much laboring. There are lovers who thought love should be so much compounded of high courtesy that they would sigh and quote with learned looks precedence out of beautiful old books. Yet now it seems an idle trade enough. We sat grown quiet at the name of love we saw the last embers of daylight die, and in the trembling blue-green of the sky, a moon, worn as if it had been a shell, trembling, a uh, line please, washed by, sorry, can you do it? Washed by time's waters as they rose and fell, over the, in days and years, I had a thought for no one's but your ears that you were beautiful and that I strove to love you in the old highway of love, that it had all seemed happy and yet we'd grown as weary hearted as that hollow moon. Hi, this is What Lips My Lips Have Kissed and Where and Why by Edna St. Vincent Millay. What lips my lips have kissed and where and why I have forgotten and what arms have lain under my head till morning. But the rain is full of ghosts tonight that tap and sigh upon the glass and listen for reply. And in my heart there stirs a 
quiet pain for unremembered lads that not again will turn to me at midnight with a cry. Thus in the winter stands the lonely tree, nor knows what birds have vanished one by one, yet knows its boughs more silent than before. I cannot say what loves have come or gone. I only know that summer sang in me a little while, and in me sings no more. Hello, everyone. And with that, we've now concluded our third round of judging for the competition. And I'd like to, while our judges are tabulating scores, invite all of our regional finalists out to sit on the stage. Well, I'm sure they're coming. <laughs> while they're walking their way out onto the stage, I'd also like to have come to the stage our award presenter, an individual who is integral to the New Jersey Poetry Out Loud mission and a major supporter of arts throughout the states uh, through stewardship as a board member with the State Arts Council, as well as a number of foundations and organizations across New Jersey, Jeremy Grunin. Well, now I'm concerned that they're going to come on out while I'm talking, and that would be really, because I'm not a good reader to begin with, let alone, <laughs> oh, see, look at that. Let's give it up for them as they're coming. There you go. <laughs> I have to say, I, I got stressed every time the microphone had to change heights. I don't know about you all, but like that, that would have probably floored me as it was. Good, good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Grunin, member of the Arts Education Committee for the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. I'd like to welcome you to the Region 3 New Jersey Poetry Out Loud regional competition featuring students from Monmouth, Middlesex, and Ocean Counties. I'd like to offer a big thank you to the Grunin Center for the Arts, uh, which is so awkward for me to say. Um, I'm Jeremy Grunin, but by the way. Um, for being our partner and host in this event, it takes quite the team to make New Jersey Poetry Out Loud as successful as it's been for so many years now. And we're especially grateful to all our regional partners without whom this important program would not be possible. New Jersey Poetry Out Loud has been growing steadily for the past 18 years. Uh, and we continue to rank in the top five nationwide for student and school participation. This year, we anticipate that we will remain among the top participating states with a total of 21,874 students at 66 schools across the state. That's amazing, isn't it? What a huge number. Thank you to the Poetry Out Loud team, Samantha. Justiniani. I, you know, I've known her for 10 years and I still can't say her name right. Uh, Kenya Bullock from the Count Basie Center for the Arts and Samantha Clark from the State Arts Council. And I'd like to give a very special thanks to the educators and caregivers who have offered their time and support to so many participating students this year. Lastly, on behalf of Secretary of State Tahisha Way and the board and staff of the State Arts Council, I'd like to give my sincere congratulations to all of today's outstanding students. Uh, you know, the arts and arts education, we are so blessed in our state uh, to be among those with the greatest access to the arts. Um, and and I, I think we all have to take a step back and understand what that really means. Access to the arts isn't necessarily about, about our young folks ultimately having careers in the arts, right? They're not all going to be on Broadway, unfortunately. Sorry, I don't mean to burst everyone's bubble. Um, you're not going to all work in Hollywood or even at Netflix necessarily when they come to Monmouth County. But what we do allow and what we do encourage through an opportunity through arts education is an opportunity to, to, to open up the way one sees the world, to way one, the way one thinks, and to open up creativity. And we all know that the vast majority of jobs that are going to be available in these young folks' lives haven't even been created yet. Right? Those jobs aren't even out there. And having the opportunity to be able to think on the fly and think creatively like they do is really a credit. And they're off to an incredible start on this journey uh, that they're about to embark on. So congratulations to each one and every one, each and every one of you. 
So with this, this, with that, this tells me to stop talking and pass it back to Eric for the award ceremony. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and that's when Eric comes up. Oh, hey that there, was good. Jeremy, I'm right that here. was smooth, smooth, smooth. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for coming today at the Jay and Linda Grennan Center for the Arts. I'm, I'm sure we've said that name so many times at this point. You all know exactly where you are. And at this point, I'd like to call out some of the, the champions' names and present them with their award for participating. And also, Jeremy will be running backstage to grab little goodie bags for everyone that's participating today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, you'll find them. So first up, I'd like to congratulate, let's see. We have uh, Shan uh, Shanley Avery, who unfortunately had to leave a little early. Next up, we have Spencer Copeland. Oh, Thank you. I'm supposed to wait, we're supposed to give a goodie bag? Oh, yeah. Is this the goodie bag? That's it, yeah. Oh, there you go. Here's a <laughs> Edith Zhao. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Winter Delaney. That's great. You can just shake. Just want to say congratulations. Good for you. Emma Housen. Leah Marchetti. <laughs> Mia Mazarek. <laughs> Catherine Mern. <laughs> Gabriella Postigo. Julia Saltara. Nathan Scanlon. Jillian Schultz. And Emily Wilczek. So at this point, the last two people in the stands know who they are. They will be our regional finalists that will be heading down to Trenton next month to participate and represent regions two and three. They are Lydia Smith. <laughs> and also Jake Fredericks. Good luck to our two finalists, and thank you again to all of our champions that participated today. We really appreciate you coming out here, and thank you again to all the teachers who make sure that this program can exist inside your classrooms. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe trip back to your home districts, and don't forget to come back and visit Ocean County College again. Be sure to carry poetry with you every day.